Just a few years ago, Clemson football was on top of the world. As a true freshman, Trevor Lawrence had just totally dismantled Alabama in the national championship game, and from that point on, many were wondering if the Clemson Tigers would become a new dynasty in college football. Dabo Sweeney got consistent praise, the Tigers produced a ton of superstar players, and got a couple of national championship rings. Now as we flash forward a few years later, as it stands right now, Clemson football is currently 4-4. Four four. Over the last few years though, the warning signs have been there. They had a slow start in 2021, they obviously missed the playoff last year, and then this year, they're 500. There's a very real chance that Clemson could only be a 6 or 7 win team this year, and if things don't change soon, there's also a chance that Dabo Sweeney could be fired as the head coach of Clemson. While some may think that's extreme, I think most people are starting to realize that Clemson as a program is falling behind. Dabo has refused to change his ways, and now it is hurting the program as a whole, and they are no longer able to keep up the same amount of success that they used to have. In today's video, we're going to go through the entire rise and fall of Clemson football. We're going to go through how they got so much hype and almost build a dynasty to begin with, talk about what has gone wrong over the last few years, this season, and what I expect in the future for them. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you can support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I should cover next. Now let's get started and talk about the sad downfall of Clemson football. For the Dabo Sweeney era, this definitely feels like rock bottom. But going back in time, Clemson's always been a historic program, and Dabo Sweeney has seen a ton of success, and I really hope his reputation doesn't get tarnished for what he's been able to achieve at Clemson. The program as a whole has been awesome. They have over 750 wins, have been to 50 different bowl games, have three national championships, and have two more national championship appearances. Most of that work has come under Dabo Sweeney, but before he got there, Clemson was sort of on hard times. In 1999, Tommy Bowden became the head coach, and the Tigers could not get over the hump. They were stuck between that 7 and 9 win mark each and every season, and never got higher than 14th in the polls. That's why Clemson had the reputation of being a team stuck in no man's land, and it wasn't until Dabo Sweeney came in that things finally changed. After being the interim for 7 games in 2008, he'd take over in 2009 and immediately led them to a 9 win season. They had a disappointing year in 2010, but in 2011, Sweeney would start to get things going. He won 10 games in 2011, won 11 games in 2012, and then once again won 11 games in 2013. He got the Tigers ranked as high as number 7 in the country, and they beat Ohio State in the Orange Bowl. At the time, he was successfully able to land 5-star quarterback Taj Boyd, and he would start Clemson's magical run at the quarterback spot. In 2014, the Tigers once again went 10-3, but they had not fully unleashed Deshaun Watson yet. Cole Stout started most of the year, but everyone knew the highly touted 5-star was eventually going to be the future of the program, and in 2015, Clemson would put it all together and create a magical season for Dabo. Led by Deshaun at quarterback, the Tigers had a tremendous team with tons of future NFL players such as Wayne Gallman, Artavis Scott, Deion Kane, Hunter Renfro, and Ray Ray McLeod. Not only that, but they were anchored by a tremendous defense, and Clemson's culture was unmatched. Some argued it was the best in all of college football, and that would lead them all the way to the college football playoff in 2015. They'd end up beating the Oklahoma Sooners in the first round 37-17 before losing 45-40 against Alabama. Dabba was knocking on the door of getting Clemson to a national championship, and a year later, he would do it. Watson was once again back, Gallman was a superstar in the backfield, and Mike Williams emerged as one of the top receivers in all of college football. The defense had future studs such as Dexter Lawrence, Christian Wilkins, Clellan Farrell, and Trayvon Mullen. The Tigers would once again cruise the regular season, destroy Ohio State 31-0 in the Fiesta Bowl, and then got to the national championship, where they would once again rematch with Alabama. With just a little bit of time remaining, Sean Watson drove the Tigers down the field and eventually found Hunter Renfro on the last play of the game. It was a walk-off winning touchdown that gave Dabo his first national championship, put Clemson at the top of college football, and showed that a future dynasty could be at the works at Clemson. Taj Boyd helped bring them to success, and Deshaun Watson capitalized off it and got them over the hump to a national championship. Dabo would once again have to figure out the quarterback spot, and luckily, he had another five-star from Georgia who was considered generational. Because Kirby Smart was late to the game with Trevor, Lawrence ended up finding his home at Clemson and was immediately given unbelievable hype. But wait, but most people forget there is a quarterback between Watson and Trevor. It was Kelly Bryant. He was a four-star recruit from the state of South Carolina, and after being prepped to be the next big thing, he would take over in 2017 and would have a mixed bag of the season. 
He was seen as nothing more than an athletic game manager and was definitely nowhere near Boyd or Watson. Clemson ended up going 12 and two and ended up losing in the Sugar Bowl against Alabama. It was still a solid year, but now in 2018, people were ready for Trevor to take over. Except Dabo had some loyalty towards Kelly still, and for the first couple of games, Bryant would get the start. Everyone knew that Trevor was the future, and there was no reason not to let the freshman play right away if he could elevate the team and potentially get them back to the national championship. That is eventually what happened, and at the time, it was somewhat controversial that Bryant got benched, but the same thing happened to Alabama with Jalen Hurts, and for those big schools, they want to win national titles, and they'll do whatever it takes to win. Luckily, this move paid off, as Trevor led them to a perfect 12-0 regular season, a win in the ACC championship, and then two wins in the college football playoff. They destroyed Notre Dame 30-3 in the Cotton Bowl, and then Trevor picked apart Alabama 44-16. This was a monumental moment in college football, and at this time, Clemson was on top of the world, and some were even saying that Dabo's Tigers could replace the Crimson Tide as, a, as the top program in the country, and that maybe Dabba was the better coach than Saban. Except that was the peak of Clemson football. Since then, they have not won a national championship, have slowly regressed, and now no one in the world would say that Dabba's a better coach than Saban. It's funny how things can just change in five to six years. So in the next part of the video, we're gonna talk about why Clemson has been on the downfall over these last few years and how it was a slow death for them. So going into the 2019 season, Clemson now had a couple of superstars on the roster. You return Trevor, had Travis Etienne, receiver T. Higgins, and linebacker Isaiah Simmons. Clemson was loaded top to bottom with star-studded talent, and it's why they got up to a 12-0 record once again. They did have a scare against Sam Howell in North Carolina, but eventually they get back to the college football playoff, but they'd play against Ohio State in the Fiesta Bowl. This was one of the best college football playoff games of all time, as Justin Fields had a late interception, and Clemson would get back to the national championship. Unfortunately for the Tigers, most years they probably would have won it, but they ran into 2019 LSU. Led by Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, and Clyde Edwards-Alaire, LSU had one of the most explosive offenses of all time, Joe Burrow was the Heisman winner, and LSU was top to bottom the best team in college football. The national championship really wasn't even all that close, and LSU won 42-25, sending Clemson home early without another national championship. Going into 2020, things would end up getting weird. The world was in quite the weird spot, and in a crazy season like this, Clemson was a heavy favorite to win the national championship due to having Trevor and Travis back for one more season. Except it didn't all go as planned. Trevor played the first few games, but would end up having to sit out a couple of games due to everything going on in the world, and his backup would have to come in instead. True freshman five-star quarterback DJ Uyangale came into play and helped lead them to a close win over Boston College, and then would have to go into hostile territory and play against Notre Dame. Notre Dame actually had a ton of fans for this game, but the Fighting Irish scored on the first play, and in an absolute thriller, would knock off Clemson, despite nearly 500 yards from DJ Uyangale. DJ was definitely the future, but it was time to hand it back to Clemson so they could get back to the national championship. They close out the regular season, win a rematch of the ACC title at Notre Dame, and then would play in the Sugar Bowl against Ohio State. Ohio State was pretty tired of losing to Clemson. Eventually, Justin Fields put it all together and picked apart Clemson as the Buckeyes won 49-28, sending Trevor Lawrence home for a second straight year and giving him a loss to end his career. With how loaded that team was, many were really hoping that Clemson would get a national championship in those last two years, and all of a sudden that dynasty was starting to fall apart as they could not quite get it done those last two years. Except though, everyone just expected Clemson would be fine going into 2021. They'd reload with talent, DJ Uyangale would step up and be a top three quarterback, and everything would just work out nice for him, right? Well, no. The slight downfall was between 2019 and 2020, the hard downfall happened in 2021. Led by DJ and an army of players at the running back and receiver spot, Clemson's offense was just not the same. They opened up the year as the number three team in the country and would face off at number five Georgia. This was the game of the week, but not really the game of the year. The only touchdown came on a Georgia pick six, and it was a very disappointing showing by both teams, but Georgia got the best in 110-3. Clemson got their first loss of the year, and their back was already gonna be against the wall. They defeated both South Carolina State and Georgia Tech their next two games, before they'd lose a game that would send them seemingly in a spiral. On the road against NC State, the Wolfpack came ready to play, and in one of the most thrilling games of the 2021 season, NC State would miss a field goal in regulation to win, but would eventually win in double overtime by way of an incredible catch on the side of the end zone. Clemson lost their second game of the year, some of their players lost their cool, EJ Williams, and now they were 2-2. Two and two. How was Clemson going to respond to losing for the first time? That is what everyone was excited to see. Well, technically, they did respond with wins. It was not pretty. They only beat Boston College by 6 points, survived by 3 on the road against Syracuse, 
and then eventually lost to Kenny Pickett and Pitt. At this time, Clemson was 4-3, and, and to fans, it felt like the sky was falling. Many thought it couldn't get any worse, and luckily, it wouldn't. From there, they go on a six-game winning streak, which included wins against Florida State, Louisville, number 10 Wake Forest, and on the road against South Carolina. They totally blanked the Gamecocks 30-0, and would be matched up in the Cheez-It Bowl against Iowa State. It was kind of ridiculous that Iowa State was put in that game, but Clemson would take advantage of it and win 20-13. Despite an absolutely disastrous start, Dabo's Tigers still went 10-3. As I said earlier, DJ gave off mixed results, and they couldn't find a go-to running back or a go-to receiver. Something was definitely off on the offensive side of the ball, and now they lose their offensive coordinator. Tony Elliott decided to take the head coaching job at Virginia, and their defensive coordinator, Brent Venables, would leave to take the head coaching job at Oklahoma. They had already previously lost Jeff Scott to USF, and now some of Davo's best coaches were getting poached, and they would really need a bounce back in 2022. The bounce back did not happen. While they did start out the season on a high note, they ended up falling apart at the end. Clemson won their first eight games and climbed as high as number five in the country and had wins over number 14 Syracuse, number 10 NC State, and number 21 Wake Forest. All was looking well for them, but then they got absolutely obliterated by first year head coach Marcus Freeman in Notre Dame. This was absolutely embarrassing for Clemson and would eventually send them on a spiral and would leave them a very slim margin of error if they wanted to make it to the college football playoff. Luckily, they took care of Louisville and Miami, but then lost at home to South Carolina. The Gamecocks were fresh off a huge victory over a top five Tennessee team and carried the momentum into Death Valley, and Spencer Rattler would stun Clemson in the Palmetto Bowl, winning 31 to 30. Clemson had now lost their second game, was eliminated from the college football playoff, lost to a rival, and people were not happy with Dabo. A win over North Carolina in the ACC Championship did nothing to calm the flames, and then their blowout loss to number six Tennessee in the Orange Bowl also didn't help anything either. After a spectacular start, Clemson really fell apart at the end, and his new hires of Brandon Streeter and Wes Goodwin did not work out. At this point, Clemson fans were definitely starting to get restless, but in their minds, there was only one reason why Clemson was struggling. It was the quarterback spot. They had been spoiled with Boyd, Lawrence, and Watson, and DJ Uyangale just wasn't good enough. That is what pretty much everyone thought, but now as we found out, it doesn't look like the quarterback is the only problem for Clemson, and it looks like as a whole, things are completely falling apart. DJ would transfer over to Oregon State, and former 2022 five-star Cade Klubnik would now get his starting role in 2023. This is where the extreme downfall begins. So if you would have told me Clemson football was gonna be bad this year, I would have probably thought a nine and three finish, which to their standard is bad. But honestly, it's been a complete disaster for them. Cade Klubnik was expected to step up in a big way. The receiving room was supposed to be better. A new offensive coordinator, Garrett Riley from TCU, was supposed to change everything. More importantly, DJ was gone, so now Clemson would be totally fine, right? Wrong. In week one, they would travel on the road to play against Duke, and for the most part, this series has been completely one-sided forever. Duke was under second-year head coach Mike Elko, and was coming off a nine-win season, and had a breakout quarterback in Riley Leonard. Some thought it would be close, but no one thought that Duke would actually win this game. Except, Duke not only won, but they completely dominated Clemson. The Tigers got plenty of trips to the red zone, but just could not capitalize, and eventually Duke won 28-7, knocking Clemson from number 9 to number 25. Was Clemson fans went into complete despair? There's no reason they should be losing to Duke. Clemson had the advantage in every single category, and contrary to Dabo's style of play, the Tigers actually got out-toughened by the Blue Devils. How would they respond in Week 2? They'd throttle Charleston Southern, and then defeat Florida Atlantic 48-14. After two bad teams, they're now back to 2-1. Except now they'd have a huge game. They'd have to play against number 4 Florida State. Under Mike Norvell, the Seminoles were finally figuring it out, as they had a couple of superstar weapons, an experienced quarterback, and a pretty good defense. Florida State had notoriously rebuilt their roster through the transfer portal, and their style was directly contradictory to how Dabo did things. In one of the best games of the year at home so far, Clemson and Florida State went to overtime, and eventually, Keon Coleman caught the game-winning touchdown for the Seminoles, and Clemson lost 31-24. For the second time in three years, Clemson started out 2-2. Two and two. This was absolutely heartbreaking for Clemson fans as they are now eliminated from the college football playoff, lost a tough one at home, and now have gotten passed by Florida State. From there, they went on the road and defeated Syracuse before only beating Wake Forest by five points at home. At this point, Clemson fans were beyond panicked and nothing seemingly was changing. From there, they went on the road to play against Miami, and in that game, they lost in double overtime. Miami is another one of those blue blood programs that Clemson passed during the Dabo era, so losing to them was not fun. They now had three losses, and they'd lose their fourth game last week as they lose on the road to NC State. In my opinion, this NC State team really isn't that great, and this loss is really bad. As we now head into the final month of college football, Clemson is currently 4-4. Four four. They still have Notre Dame, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, and South Carolina, 
and they'll probably be favored against both Georgia Tech and South Carolina, but all four of those games are going to be tough. Notre Dame is the better team right now. Georgia Tech plays unbelievably hard and is tough to beat. Despite how sluggish they are right now, North Carolina is still a solid team, and then going on the road to a rivalry game against South Carolina is also not going to be easy. This Clemson team has not shown the ability to close games this year, and something is just very off with them. Just a couple of years ago, it looked like Clemson was the next dynasty in college football, but now, midway through the 2023 season, some are wondering if Dabo will even have a job at the end of the year. I don't know if it's going to be that extreme, but I came up with three reasons as to why Clemson has been on this slow, painful death and what has caused all this downfall. These three rank in order of least to most important. The least important reason why Clemson has fallen off is because they have not been able to replicate some of the star talent they used to have. In this video, we've talked about many players such as Taj Boyd, Deshaun Watson, Wayne Gallman, Travis Etienne, T. Higgins, Mike Williams, you name it, all guys who mostly became first round picks or were superstars while they were at Clemson. As one fellow ACC coach apparently said anonymously, Clemson is still producing NFL players, they're just guys who are going to go later in the draft or are going to be undrafted free agents. The level of talent is not there, and despite high recruiting rankings, the staff is just not developing them properly. That makes the margin for error less, and I guess their luck just ran out a little bit. The second reason, in my opinion, is because of their valuable coaches being poached away, slash some of the bad hires to replace them. Losing Jeff Scott, Tony Elliott, and Brent Venables was tough. While the Clemson defense hasn't really been that big of a problem, Venables is showing that he can win at Oklahoma, and he was at Clemson for a long time, and his consistency really helped them. The Clemson receiver room has really fallen off, and that was an area where Jeff Scott was really good in. Finally, you lost Tony Elliott, who was... Finally, you lost Tony Elliott, who just like Venable, was there for all that success during the glory years of Clemson football. And while he hasn't really done a whole lot at Virginia yet, the fact that he was Power 5 head coach worthy material is a big loss. The guys they brought in to replace them just haven't been great. Streeter was let go of after one year, and the hire of Garrett Riley just hasn't panned out. Cade Klubnik has plenty of talent, and there are plenty of guys on the roster who can make plays, but something is just not clicking, and I guess that maybe wasn't the right hire to replace him. That, in my opinion, is the second reason. The first reason is definitely Davo Sweeney's coaching theories. He's been pretty anti-NIL and pretty anti-transfer portal for a long time now, and has been probably the biggest critic of any head coach. He's even talked about leaving the sport, and that is not helping Clemson right now. For example, against Florida State, I believe out of 415 total yards of Florida State offense, 411 of those yards came from transfer players. While Dabo may not like it, the best schools and the schools that are now beating him are winning through the portal. The portal has revolutionized college football, and no longer when you sign a kid out of high school does it guarantee they're going to be there for four to five years. It's just not going to happen anymore, and with NIL, recruiting is even tougher. You now have to get kids lucrative deals or they're not going to come there. Before, they may have bought in because of the Clemson name or the Clemson culture, but one, that's falling off, and two, why would you go to Clemson when you can go to a school just as good and make some money along the way? Sweeney has been very anti that, and while he's lost plenty of players to the portal, he has not really picked up any besides a couple of backup quarterbacks. That is absolutely destroying this program right now, and his inability to adapt has caused Clemson's slow death and downfall. So to recap, they haven't been able to replicate the same amount of talent they had during the glory years. Some of their big consistent coaches were poached away, and their new hires weren't great, and Dabo's anti-modernistic college football approach has killed him. Only time will be able to tell if Clemson can recover from this, but for now, they need to focus on making a bowl game, which could be a tall task for them, and Dabo should worry more about that than firing insults at random radio Collins. Yep, I said it. That's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're a Clemson fan, what the heck has gone wrong for you guys? What's it going to take to fix it, and what did I get right and wrong? Be sure to let me know down below. Let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover in my next one. Subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including how Kalen DeBoer rebuilt Washington football. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.